Everyone should know how to make carnitas, and specifically this make-ahead version that I'm gonna show you just makes sense for the home cook. The process is literally cut up pork chunks, add salt, add water, cook until the water evaporates and it's tender, then crisp up beautifully. It takes about an hour and a half total, but like 10 minutes of that is active time, and a 3.5 ounce or 100 gram serving of the pork is 290 calories and 23 grams of protein. It's a big favorite in Mexico that is the perfect dish that you can make ahead once on a Sunday afternoon and turn into many dishes throughout the week. More on that shortly. Hey everyone, I'm Ethan, a home cooking nerd who likes to find better ways to cook and share them with all of you. So Tacos de Carnitas were one of my go-to lunches last year when I was in Mexico City, and the flavors for this recipe are 100% spot on. I've just modified the technique a tiny bit so I can make this ahead of time and have it in my fridge and quite literally make a variety of lunches in like five to 10 minutes. So let's break it down. Carnitas means little meats, and in Mexico, they typically use big chunks of the whole pig, cook it in pork fat until tender and slightly browned, and then chop or shred them before filling it up in a taco. In the purest form, it's literally just pork and salt. You don't need anything else to make it delicious, but some variations may add citrus, bay leaves, or spices while slowly cooking the pork down. I think it's best with just pork and salt. Plus, if you make it ahead of time like I will show you how to, it keeps your options open as you haven't bottlenecked yourself into a certain flavor profile. For example, I turned these leftover carnitas into a pasta dish with parm and broccoli, so let's make the base recipe. To start, get out a pork shoulder. If you can find a boneless pork shoulder, this will be easier, but I had a large bone-in pork shoulder that I just cut off about a two to three pound chunk of. Using a fattier cut like the shoulder is key for this dish as it will render all the fat out and get super tender. Next, we're gonna chop this into roughly one inch cubes. Many times if doing a large pig, you would see massive chunks, but for the home cooking recipe, they cook down a bit faster and are easier to handle. Once cubed up, set a cooking pot over a scale and add the meat. You're gonna note that weight down, and in my case, this was 1300 grams, and then add one to 1.5% 1 salt, which is gonna be like 13 to 19 grams, depending on how much salt you wanna add. Now at the sink, add just enough water so it barely covers the pork. A couple of pieces should definitely still be sticking out. You don't want too much water because then it will take too long to evaporate at all. At the stove, place the pot over medium-high heat, and then bring this to a boil, and then you're just going to set the heat down to medium-low. Then while stirring occasionally, we're going to let this cook down until all the water has evaporated. And at this stage, two key things are happening. One, we are slowly braising the pork in the water, and number two, the fat is rendering out. Both of these result in a super tender piece of pork in the final product. Now, this is also the stage that if you did want to add some aromatics or spices, you could definitely do so. After about 45 minutes, I noticed that I kind of added too much water, so I just poured some off. You can definitely do this if you notice it's taking a little bit too long for that all to evaporate, and then just put it back on as normal. Once all that water has completely evaporated, you should be left with a layer of pork fat or lard that will then start to brown the pieces and really turn into those carnitas. At this point though, you have a decision to make. Number one, am I serving this now? Or number two, am I storing this for later? For option one, just keep cooking the pieces of fork in that rendered fat until they are beautifully browned all over and slightly crisp. For option two, don't continue cooking them until they are brown. Instead, we're going to save these and then you can brown them after taking them out of the fridge for whatever you want to use them for. However, whichever option you do choose, you also have to decide what texture you want to serve them as. The three typical ones are to leave them as little hunks, chop them into small pieces, or bash them into little strands. The chopped version is the one that I found most common in Mexico City, but the mashed one is actually my preferred texture. 
All you do is add the pork pieces to a mortar and pestle and bash them up, and it creates these perfect little strands of pork that I really enjoy. To store the pork, add it to a container and then just pop it in the fridge. By not continuing the browning process, we can then just spoon some of this pork out onto the griddle and crisp them up perfectly for however we may be serving them. Speaking of, here are three dishes that I made after using these. For the classic taco de carnitas, pull some out of the fridge and then just add it to the griddle to start to crisp up. Once that is starting to crisp up, I'll also throw some corn tortillas up to help steam and crisp them up. Once ready, you're just going to hit this with some onion, cilantro, and a spritz of lime, and it takes me right back. I spent many a lunchtime standing at a cart ordering tacos like this one by one until I was full. Alright, now for some more untraditional uses. So with carnitas, we kind of have this variant of pulled pork. So I took out some of the leftovers and then just propped them on the griddle and let them get nice and crispy. Once browned, I added a little golden barbecue sauce or whatever your favorite sauce is. And then you just slap this on a bun with some onions, some pickles, and a little drizzle of horseradish mayo. It takes all of five minutes to make and is oh so delicious. Then lastly, I decided to head towards some Italian. I added olive oil to a wok, brought it to medium temp, then added some sliced garlic, red pepper flakes, the carnitas, and chopped baby broccoli to the mix, and just let everything slightly cook down. Once cooked down and aromatic, I poured in some starchy pasta water and mixed in a bunch of Parmesan to kind of create a sauce for the pasta. Then I came in with my cooked orchiette and just kind of mixed everything and now I have this delicious pasta dish. One sauce to your liking, just toss it in a bowl, maybe hit it with a little bit more parm over top. And there we have some Italian pasta that was inspired by Mexican roots. So no matter how you end up using your carnitas, uh, you just got to make them like you can have meals like this in you know minutes or it's great for a crowd if you want to make it ahead of time. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. This sandwich is kind of blowing my mind with how good it is right now. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.